Ooh, okay, I moved. What's chirping at me? What? Are you... Fuck, look at you. <laughs> Jesus think? fucking Christ. <laughs> that couldn't get any worse if you tried. <laughs> worse or better? Welcome to Slime Corp Personnel Induction and Training, <laughs> also known as The Facility. You Fuck. will be called forward for processing shortly. For now, you can explore the reception area. Use the WASD keys to move around and oh, the really? mouse to look. The space bar is used to jump. Yes! That's fairly standard. Can we kill shit? Can we kill each other? Uh, Come here! The all recruits will Shut leave up. reception and board the travelator, which will deliver you to your training course. Once aboard the belt, do not use your movement keys. Oh. Although you can continue to look around with the mouse. Uh oh. Slime okay. Corp is not responsible for any physical or psychological harm that may result from disobeying these instructions. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh man. Where's that squeaky thing? Uh. 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 Whoa, don't move. This facility runs on the cutting edge of induction and training technology. <laughs> Applicants are automatically filtered and sorted by their potential and routed into the appropriate processing area. How exactly do they the filter applicants? Of one of the highest turnover rates on the planet. They don't, <laughs> if they let you in. <laughs> all thanks to our first class training. Okay. Some of Slime Corp's most well-known innovations have come from this facility, such as the reconstituted cake factory, land blighting quarries, the crowdsourcing of manual labor, mm -hmm. and the Orbital Mining Laser Project. Orbital Mining Laser Project. <laughs> now sit fantastic. back and enjoy the ride as you are carried towards your evaluated training center. Mm -hmm. What is this? Ah. Huh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> what do you... Ah, the sound effects are perfect. Mel, I, mm -hmm. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Kansas? Uh. <laughs> I wonder if that can crush you. Um. <laughs> oh, look, they're dancing. Uh, on fire. <laughs> Human resources. Can we like knock over the sign? Hey, we're new employees, man. Don't rock the boat. You do not know how much restraint I am exercising not punching shit. I whip my block back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Whoa! It seems our IQ evaluator was not able to detect any significant brain activity <laughs> and has filtered you as cargo. Excellent. Rather than accept your new fate as a lump of passive produce, you can get back upstairs and resume your training as a lump of active produce. Oh. The wooden crates are too tough to collect with your bare hands. However, there are some hay bales in the corner. You can break blocks by moving close to them, looking at them, and holding down the left mouse button to punch them until they break. They'll pop out into the world as a collectible item, and will get added to your inventory when you walk over it. Collect all of the hay bales. Oh boy! Gimme, give gimme, give gimme! Give a good rule of thumb to remember is that left click is used to interact with the world destructively, such as breaking blocks and swinging weapons. <laughs> right click is used to interact with dynamic objects, such as reading a book, opening a door, or activating a lever. <gasps> hey, Mel, come and read this. Right, right click on the book. 100. <laughs> 78,000 legal pads. <laughs> 100 quote volunteers. Mmm, <laughs> uranium. Yum. Alright. So we Move need over to... to the opposite side of the loading dock, away from the iron grate door. You'll see a hole in the ceiling marked with hazard blocks. This is where you'll climb back up. Oh, really? Blocks you've collected can be placed back in the world. Scroll the mouse wheel until the hay is selected. You'll notice it appears visually in your hand. Aim at a surface such as the floor or a wall and right-click to place a block there. 
With a few exceptions, blocks are not subject to gravity and will not fall, even if there's nothing beneath them. Use the hay bales to construct stairs up into the hole in the ceiling. Sweet! Alright, so I'm failing horribly. I'm putting blocks down. Yeah, jump, just nerd pull. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah! Oh, yeah, baby. Well done. Perhaps there is hope for you yet. Oh, I'm back on the thing. Uh. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> All new recruits are to wait in this room until the test chambers have been prepared. There's a button. If damage should occur to the tree in the middle of the room, the tree can be replaced by right-clicking the green button. <gasps> oh. All new recruits should have in their possession 16 wooden logs. Remember that the fine print of the invitation brochure stated that you must bring your own wood. Failure to supply wood will result in a re-evaluation of your processing method. Happy to comply. Gimme, 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 gimme. E. Sixteen wood. More Jesus wood. Christ, people! <gasps> Fuck you, buddy. Ah. 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 Which is the wood? The uh, welcome packet, hay bale, birch wood. Okay, we need what? 16? Did he say words? 16, yes. Of which? Oh, okay. Of birch wood. Yeah. Not dirt. Okay. Give me, I press the button. Press it again! Give me a tree! Okay, hang on. Put the dirt back. <laughs> Oh, is oh, that yeah. what the problem is? <laughs> <laughs> Put the dirt back in the hole. Now, there you go. Dirt's back. Press the button. <laughs> Alright, here we go. <laughs> no, don't kill me yet, fuck! Oops. Wait. Let it grow. Let it grow! Where's it? Come on. Do I have to water this thing or something? Pee on it. <laughs> Look, alright, you're the fucking redneck. You pee on it. <laughs> Can we fuck up the leaves? Uh, well, yeah, probably. We'll probably get something else. What do we get? We get. Huh. Oh, we get saplings from it. Cool. Yeah, you gotta walk on the block that it drops. Oh, yeah. oh, there we go. There we go. Wood, wood. I got wood. It's a bit stormy out there. Do we have to have. Shit. Do we have to have. 16 each or. Yep. How many you got? Seven. You got 16? Yeah, but I hate this tree now, so. <laughs> the test chamber is ready. Proceed into the next room. <gasps> Shit! Yep, 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 yep! More wood! Where's the next? Oh, I see. Okay. Through the great big fucking door. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Yeah. I want to be an axe. All no. new recruits will now learn basic crafting mechanics by Ooh. constructing the four basic tools a pickaxe, an axe, a hoe, and a shovel. Your hoe. The first step is to turn your wood logs into planks. Open your inventory screen by pressing E. <gasps> e! Next to your character and equipment slots, you will see a 2x2 two two grid. This interface lets you craft simple recipes with your hands, no matter where you are. The recipe to turn logs into planks is what's called a shapeless recipe. Simply place the logs into any of the four squares, and you'll see the output of wooden planks become available. If you left-click the planks, you'll perform the recipe once, turning one log into four planks. You can left-click multiple times without putting the planks into your inventory, decreasing the logs remaining, and increasing the number of planks in your hand. Right-clicking will craft all materials until you get a full stack or the raw materials run out. Go ahead and turn some of your logs into planks. Oops, I turned all of mine in. <laughs> Next, you're going to need some sticks. 
The recipe is two planks, one above the other vertically. Go ahead and craft eight sticks and put all of them back into your inventory. No. Help. Okay. I can get the planks, but I can't get the sticks. They're called buttons? No, I'll put, um, grab the two, grab, uh, uh, grab your planks and drop them in the, in the top left of the crafting thing. Oh, split them. Yeah, yeah and, the, and then go. right click and, and split them, and then over on the right you get sticks. And we need how many? Eight. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. I have You have eight. almost everything you need to follow the recipes on the wall, but you lack a three by three crafting space. Create a crafting table by assembling four planks, one in each square of your personal 2x2 two two grid. The crafting table is a block that can be placed in the world. Place it down on top of the colored wool next to the chest. Place the, the planks? Oh. I think that's how I do it. What? Oh, you mean something different. What's that thing? Oh, did I just place something? Did I do it wrong? <laughs> no, melted it right. Uh, you got to make a crafting table and then put it down in that spot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I scratch it with my fingernails. All right, so I need to make a crafting table. Simple instructions, Rick. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, settle down. <laughs> You missed one, I missed the other. How do you make the crafting table? Um, put one block in each of the four slots. Good. If you right click the crafting table, you can interact with it and perform crafting on a 3x3 three three grid. Yeah! Now, use your planks and sticks to create one of each of the tools shown on the wall. If you run out of planks, simply convert more logs into planks. Planks and sticks. Okay, that's, that's a good start. And then I need... oh, no. Please note, if you close the crafting interface without putting everything back in your inventory, you will throw the materials on the ground like an irresponsible man-child. No fucking Pick them back shit! Up again, provided the items don't land somewhere hazardous. Thanks for the fucking notification. <laughs> oh, we suck. <laughs> you have made a shovel! Two, two, two. I did it! I've got one more to do. Someone three. Oh my god. Do you see those people up in the window there? <laughs> Laughing at us? Yeah. Yes! I I did it! Sirs, I must Excellent. apologize for my to complete the most trivial companion. Of tasks. Your training budget might not be a complete loss. <laughs> Move into the next room. <laughs> Move up to the observation window and we will demonstrate the effects of falling. <laughs> the first volunteer falls only a short distance. <laughs> Note that he took no damage from his short fall. <laughs> oh, he's fucked. Our next volunteer will fall a little further. Oh no! Splunch. He has taken some damage from the fall, but has survived. Well, that's handy. Our final volunteer will now fall the entire length of the shaft. Bum bum. <laughs> oh, balls deep. Damn. He can even survive falls from this height, but he is down to just two hearts of health remaining. Oh, poor bastard. We would like to take this opportunity to remind you that Slime Corp is not liable for any damages suffered in the line of duty. Including but not limited to fall damage, immolation, and transdimensional severance. Immolation! <laughs> I'm not a valued employee. We're, oh, the quotes say it all.
Uh, I want to be valued. Um, right. Another major hazard comes into play in the darkness, such as unlit areas or when the sun goes down. In areas that are not sufficiently lit, monsters will start to spawn and attack you. When you're just starting out and the sun sets at the end of your first day, you will want to build what's called a day one house. These are typically cobbled together with whatever materials you can find, with dirt blocks serving as a door. You're just trying to isolate yourself from the monsters until the break of day. Bats. Like the small interior with a single torch, or if you don't have one, simply build it small enough that monsters cannot spawn inside with you. Oh, I get it. one block hole in the wall so you can see the sky and tell when it's safe to come out. At the break of day, some of the monsters will burn in the sunlight, and you can likely outrun the rest. Woohoo! Next, let's look at some of the common monsters you may encounter in relatively safe <laughs> miniature form. <laughs> the, the, the spider is Zombies fantastic. Zombies are fairly straightforward and one of the easiest enemies you will encounter. They move towards you at low to moderate speed and try to engage in melee combat. Fuck you can em up. keep a single one at bay fairly easily, but if you're swarmed by a group of them, you may run into trouble. Zombies burn in the daylight. Skeletons are much more dangerous than zombies. They move at a similar speed, but come equipped with a bow and arrows. Oh, Jesus. They can shoot at you from a distance. Nah. They fire fairly rapidly. If you are trying to close the distance and they've got a clear shot at you, you'll be knocked back two steps for every three you manage to take forward. No. It's best to take cover, force them into a bottleneck, or take them out with a ranged weaponry of your own. Like zombies, they burn in the daylight. Yeah. Spiders are an interesting enemy. They move much faster than skeletons and zombies, about the same as your running speed, oh, and shit. will always try to close to melee combat. When they're close enough, they'll pounce on you, making them harder to keep at bay than a zombie. Oh, they're huntsmen. Spiders can also scale vertical surfaces with ease. Fuck you. Spiders do not burn in the sun, but if they're not already aggressive, then they will behave passively in the daylight. Spiders are going down. Creepers are one of the most dangerous enemies you can possibly face, both for your own self-preservation as well as the structural integrity of your creations. <laughs> Creepers roam silently and only make a sound when they're right next to you, a hissing noise that is followed up immediately by an explosion that deals damage and destroys adjacent blocks. That's fucking rude. You should rude. engage them carefully by hitting them and backpedaling immediately, keeping them far enough away so as not to blow them up. Creepers do not burn in the sun. Oh no! Endermen are extremely dangerous opponents. They are normally passive until you look at them directly. <gasps> they will emit a scary noise and start hunting you. Scary, scary noise. Scary noise. You look at them directly and will approach at great speed from behind you, hitting hard and fast. It's recommended to avoid what if looking you at them until you are experienced <laughs> and well equipped. They are damaged by water, so if you get into trouble, you can stand in a body of water or run out into the rain to lose them. There are many other monsters you might encounter, but yep. this should cover the most common. Move That's into rude. the next room. We're bound. <laughs> Bodies of water can absorb the impact from falls, preventing fall damage. The further the fall, the deeper the water must be. Ready? I think that was a hint. You can move around in water much the same as on land. I regret nothing. Hold the space bar to ascend to the surface. Oh While yeah, I was going to say, water, you'll see how do an I oxygen not die? at the bottom of your screen, showing oh, yeah. how much longer you can remain underwater before you start taking health damage. I see. This concludes your preliminary training. As a beneficiary of our world-class training and cutting-edge facilities, you have now incurred a combined debt of 9,000 diamonds, which we have graciously incorporated into our long-term repayment plan. Due to your limited technical proficiency, you have been assigned to manual labor in the enslavement pits, which will be your home for the foreseeable future. Ninth, it should be 9,000 In the wilds, you yeah. need to be wary of monsters spawning in this darkness, but the pits are part of the Slime Corp facility, and so are protected from monster attacks. The first order of business is fixing the damage caused by the previous team of workers prior to their expiry. <laughs> Consider <laughs> the former foreman's journal on the desk in front of you. Alright. 
Idiots haven't been replanting the crops, so we're out of food. I've been moved to human resources. Must be better than this shit. <laughs> okay. To your left, you can see what remains of the worker safe house, which sustained damage due to general incompetence. Your first order of business will be to repair the structure. Find your way over to the mining area, where you will find some minecart tracks and a tunnel bore machine. Oh shit. Aha! Alright. Slime Corp would like to remind all workers that the oppressive fog is also due to your proximity to bedrock, and not solely due to the air quality. Well, Locate handy. the mine shaft created by the previous workers. It's the tunnel into the rock supported by wooden beams. You are going to clear out the cave-in and continue digging this tunnel. The gravel can be broken and picked up with your bare hand. You'll notice if you punch the stone, it will take a very long time. And if you do break it, you will not receive the block. It is simply destroyed. To dig forward through stone efficiently, you will need to use your wooden pickaxe. Place the tool on your action bar in your inventory screen and scroll the mouse wheel until it is the selected item. You! Yeah. Yeah, boy. Coal ore can be found underground and serves as one of the most important basic commodities. Coal is good for humanity. Mm. Coal ore requires a pickaxe to break. Thanks, and Tony. Instead of dropping as the block, <laughs> will instead drop as a piece of coal, plus a little bit of experience. EXP! Keep clearing out the tunnel until you find iron ore or your pickaxe breaks. Oh, what's this? You'd normally make a replacement pickaxe now. But first, return to the worker safe house with the materials you've gathered so far. Please note, if you try to break iron ore with a wooden pickaxe, it won't work. It will take far too long, and you'll only destroy the resource. Oi. A pickaxe is the correct tool, but a wooden one isn't good enough. For now, take your stone and coal back to the worker safe house. Alright, where's that? Doctor? This way? Are you a real doctor? Yep. Yeah. Use cobblestone or wooden planks to repair the safe house. Fill in the gaps and complete the rectangular shape, leaving a one by two hole for you to walk through. Ensure you have a total of 14 cobblestone left over between you. Fuck. Where do you want to put the door? Here? Sure. You're we using cobblestone, right? Yeah. I thought he said cobblestone. Yeah, he said we need to keep 14 left over. Okay. Uh, do we have to wall this whole thing in? How big is it? Probably. Yeah, all right. How high do we have to go? I can't see. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, wait. That's all dirt. I'm gonna just continue the roof. I th roof. The I th roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. The roof is on fire. Fire! We don't need no water. Nothing. You still got a roof hole. Yeah? <laughs> that is work? that all the roof? Oh, it is too. How about that? So we wanted a one by two hole for the door. The easiest way to add light to the inside of the safe house is to use a torch. The recipe is to place a piece of coal above a stick, resulting in four torches. This can be done in your personal crafting screen. Go ahead and make four torches each. You can place torches the same way you place blocks. They are just smaller, can be walked through, and cannot be placed on the ceiling. Torches don't require any special tool to break, and can be reused indefinitely. Torches are a key resource in exploring the world. Not only do they make it easier to see, but as previously mentioned, monsters cannot spawn in areas that are too bright. Yay! Next, create a crafting table and place it somewhere inside the safe house. How do we make a crafting table again? <laughs> oh, four it was... Four. No, it was uh, birchwood planks. Yep, four by four. Huh? One in each. Oh. That's right. You making it? 
Yep. Got it. Okay. Dead. Oh boy. If you have spare wooden planks, create a door by assembling two full columns side by side on the crafting table. You can place a door on the floor in the gap in the wall. Right clicking the door will toggle it between open and closed. All right, you can do that. Two full columns of what? Wooden plank. Wood and planks. I whip my plank back and forth. <laughs> I love how it's this tiny little fucking door until you place it. Use the crafting table to create a ring of cobblestone while leaving the middle square empty. This will create a furnace. <gasps> Place the furnace down somewhere in the safe house and right click to interact with it. Can we put it over in the corner, right? Say, look at my screen here. If we put it over here, does it count that that, that this one right here is the hole? Okay, give me a second. What if we can do that? Which one? Where? Um, okay, so say if where I'm standing is mm -hmm. is the hole, mm -hmm. and then you put a block here and here and here, does that count because it's cobblestone no, around he's it? he's talking about in the fucking workbench you twat. And I've already done it. But we place it somewhere. There. It's placed. Oh, I see, I saw, okay. This is a simple machine that accepts fuel in the bottom slot and an item to be cooked or smelted in the top slot. Cool. Different fuels burn for different lengths of time. Quality fuel, like coal, burns long enough to cook or smelt eight items. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to craft a new and improved pickaxe. Go back to the crafting table. Use the same pattern as last time to create a pickaxe, but instead of wooden planks along the top, use cobblestone instead. Ha, ah, they think we can remember, or they think I can remember. What was the fucking pattern? It's like a, like a T shape, so the stick is made of handles, and then it's cobblestone all the way along the top. Do not cook the stone pickaxe. Okay. The stone pickaxe is both more effective and more durable than the wooden pickaxe, and is able to mine higher grade ore blocks such as iron. Woo. Return to the mining tunnel and use your stone pickaxes to keep digging. Collect all of the iron you can find. I don't want to keep digging. Close the door behind you. This is a racket, I swear. Iron allows you to create equipment of a higher grade than stone, including some unique utility items, but it can't be used in its raw ore form. To process it, you will need to smelt it in a furnace. Place some coal in the bottom slot, the iron in the top, and wait for it all to cook. Cook the iron. Okay, so stone in the top and... Wait, iron in the top and coal in the bottom? Oh, look at this. Two people can be in the furnace at the same time. Yes, iron ingot. How many do I need? No, I'll just make... Now you've got some iron. It's time to make some useful tools. First, make a bucket. The recipe calls for three iron ingots arranged in a V shape at the bottom of the crafting window. Mm. All right, so she's doing that. I'll cook my iron. Okay, bucket obtained. The bucket is a tool that allows you to pick up fluids from the world and move them elsewhere. Now, with your wooden hoe from earlier and your new iron bucket, it's time to start growing some crops. Head over to the water reservoir. Okay, I'm in the water. With a bucket in hand, you can right-click any source block of water to scoop it up and receive a bucket of water. Yeah. Right. Notice the water refills itself immediately. A source block is any full block of water, which can then from there flow to create running water. 
If a square has water run into it from two immediately adjacent source blocks, then it becomes a source block itself. In this fashion, if you had a 1 by 3 trench and placed a source block on either end of it, the middle would fill up. And provided you only ever took from that middle space, you would have infinite water. Oh. <clears throat> right, Try this now by digging a 1 by 3 trench in the dirt on the other side of the wooden fence and putting water down on the far left and far right spaces. You can place water by right-clicking with a bucket of water in your hand. All right. So we need to dig three. I, I can't fucking see, Johnson. All right, there we go. So dig three. How do I take that? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Dig three. And how do you create a source block? You click with the bucket? Yeah, you on one end and I on the other. All right, I'm on this end. Okay, I'm on this end. Go. Wee! Yeah! Now it's time to get agricultural. Ha <laughs> ha! Crops are important in either producing food directly or in breeding animals for food. You don't need food as long as you are in the sealed environment of this slime cove facility, for this knowledge will become useful if you are sent to the surface for work. The basic process of growing crops is to hydrate the soil, till the soil, plant the seeds, and ensure they've got adequate lighting. Start by visiting the shed near the fence to acquire all of the materials you'll need to get started. Okay. Seeds? I'll only take half of each. So one seeds... Some yep. carrots, some bones? Stick and coal. We don't need Step stick and coal. One, hydration. A water source block can hydrate soil up to four blocks away, including diagonals. Therefore, one of the most efficient methods is to dig a single block hole and put water in it, and plant around the edges of that. Knock out a single block hole in the dirt and pour a bucket of water into the gap. Four blocks away, so let's go... <clears throat> One, two, three, four. And maybe here. What do you reckon? Mm -hmm. Right there? Mm -hmm. Pour a bucket in. I'll do it. Step number two. Preparing farmland. You typically can't plant crops straight into the dirt. You need to till the soil using a hoe. The quality of the hoe only affects the number of uses, so a wooden hoe is almost always sufficient. Right-clicking with the hoe in hand will till the dirt. Go ahead and till the soil around the edge of the water block. Be advised that you can safely walk on top of tilled soil, but you should not land on top of it by jumping or falling, as that will upset the surface and turn it back into normal dirt. Step number three, plant the crops. Once the farmland is prepared, hold the seeds in your hand and right-click the farmland to plant them there. Other vegetables like carrots and potatoes are planted directly into the soil without seeds. Go ahead and plant all of the vegetables and seeds, tilling more soil if you have to. All right. You gonna place shit? Go away. Shut your hole. You get out. Mm. What? I can't get out of the water. That's all I had because I took half. Oh, wait, no. Let me take all of what's left because you had already taken half. Mm hmm. Step number four lighting. Without adequate light, the crops will not grow. Oh, yeah? Sunlight can work, but at night they will not make any progress. So whether you're farming on the surface or toiling away in a legally questionable cave, it's always best to use torches to light your farms. Go ahead and place some torches as close as you can get them, so all the crops are receiving light. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, I forgot how to make torches. Shit. I didn't. Wasn't it coal and stick? Mm-hmm. I have like seven torches, so... I want my torches back and forth. How do you place them? No, not like that. Oh, uh, you just right click, but you can't chuck them on the farmland. They have to be on normal blocks. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. While we wait for the crops to grow, there's another task that needs doing. Craft some shears by placing two iron ingots into your personal crafting square. One in the top right, and one in the bottom left. Once you've got them, make your way over to the animal pens on the opposite side of the pit. Shit, we need to make some ingots then. Yeah! Okay. That's As a you can chicken. See, there are a couple of animals in each pen. <laughs> they are being held in by fences, which appear to only be a single block high, but are in fact 1.5 blocks high, preventing animals from jumping over them. Uh -huh. The only way in or out is to right click the gates, which act like doors, but be careful as that might let the animals out unless you're quick. For now, we're just here for some wool. Right click a sheep with the shears in hand and they will drop one to three wool. Not left click, as that will make you attack the sheep. Shear the sheep and pick up the wool until you've got six blocks of it. You can wait for the sheep to eat some grass, at which point they'll regrow their wool. Eat, damn it! Fucking eat! Well, they need. He said. He said they need grass. Is this is grass? I don't know. Oh Ooh. fuck! 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 Save the day. Okay. All right. Obtained. We got three each. Take the wool back to the safe house so that you can make two beds. You'll need three wool each and three wooden planks each. Make two horizontal lines: a line of wood with a line of wool on top, and you'll create a bed. All right. Bed obtained. That didn't do it. The bed is two blocks wide, and the foot of the bed will appear where you're aiming on the ground. Go ahead and place the beds on the ground. If you right-click a bed at night, you'll sleep in it, which will set your respawn point, and also cause the time to be set to dawn. Fuck, I'm out of planks. Enough, other players are also sleeping at the same time. Do you want some? Wakey, wakey. Cool. It's time to check on the crops. If they're taking too long, then we can speed them along. Using the bones you picked up, craft them into bone meal by placing them in any single square of your crafting grid. Oh, that's then, animals. With bone meal in hand, right click on a plant to accelerate its growth. I don't remember that. Whoa. I made a tree. <laughs> hmm. Well, we get why what we're trying to do. Yeah, but that was on top of everything else. Um, there was something about bone meal. Now you've got a plant at 100% growth, it's time to harvest the crops and replant the seeds. This varies with the type of crop you're working with, but essentially you want to punch the plant to break it, which will drop its produce. In the case of wheat, you'll get wheat and some seeds for replanting. And in the case of carrots and potatoes, you'll get multiple, letting you replant one of them for continued production. Go ahead and harvest the crops and replant them. Four carrots and I've got the three seeds. Farm, and we're going to learn about breeding. I need more seeds. You can cause two adult animals seeds. to breed by feeding them their preferred food. Slime Corp advises that they supposedly peer-reviewed studies on the long-term <laughs> effects of inbreeding are inconclusive and run contrary to our operating guidelines, <laughs> and thus are to be disregarded. <laughs> Let's start with the sheep. Sheep like wheat, to put some wheat in your hand. You'll notice that while you hold the wheat, their attention is fixated on you. In the wild, they will follow you in this state. You can use this to lure animals into fenced areas for safekeeping. I see. Right click one of the sheep with wheat in hand, and it will enter love mode. Now, <laughs> give some wheat to the other sheep, and the two will produce a baby offspring. <laughs> Breeding can be a useful yeah. activity for many purposes. Here are some examples. Having more sheep available will let you acquire wool at a faster rate. Likewise for cows and milk, or chickens and eggs. Additionally, if you're going to use meat as your food source, breeding will be necessary to make it sustainable. Next, breed the two cows, which also respond to wheat. No. No. Chickens can be lured and bred by feeding them seeds. You got seeds? They also oh, he, he periodically can. drop eggs, which can be thrown by right-clicking. There's a small chance that a thrown egg will spawn a new baby chicken. 
The chickens like me. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Did you get the other one? Oh, no. I got up. Ah, shut the gate. Come on. I'm holding a seed. Come here. Yeah, we had problems with that chicken. This chicken, this chicken is a dickhead. Oh, oh I got, got it. it. Fuck, fuck, fuck. All their pooping eggs. I spawned another chicken. Fuck him. Fuck. Well, they spawned one too. Pigs can be lured and bred by feeding them carrots. Excuse me. The baby animals will take some time to grow, and in their adolescent form cannot be used for wool, eggs, milk, or meat. So they Maintaining basically an animal useless. farm can be a very profitable endeavor. Wool is used in several utility recipes and also serves as a colorful building material. Milk and eggs go into more advanced and nourishing food like cake, and the meat mm, itself, cake. once cooked in a furnace, is more nourishing than most crops you can grow directly. The pit is gradually being restored to its original operating capacity. Whoop, whoop. Now it's time to continue digging out the tunnel, but for that you're going to want some better hardware. You can create iron pickaxes in the same pattern as wooden and stone. Simply put three iron ingots along the top of a stick handle. Iron pickaxe. Yeah. Take your iron pickaxes back to the mining tunnel and continue digging. The iron pickaxe is very effective and cuts through stone very quickly and is strong enough to deal with most of the strongest minerals such as gold ore and diamond ore. <gasps> Keep digging until you hit the end of the tunnel and you should find some valuable materials. Diggy diggy doo. Oh, that's much faster. Mm, yeah, no kidding. Something just went ding. -ding. Yeah, I heard that. What have I been collecting? Gravel, cobblestones. Mm. Can't stop digging. Ooh. Can't stop, won't stop. Ooh. You found some diamond. Oh, I this see. This will begin to pay off your debt to Slime Corp. Oh, Jesus. Back at the mouth of the tunnel, there is a minecart equipped with a chest. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Hit it with your pickaxe to pick it up, and place it on the end of the track on the other side, before the lever. You can place the cart on the track by aiming at it and right-clicking with the cart in hand. Okay, this one? Mm -hmm. Was was it this one? Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, now, right-click the cart to open the chest and place the diamonds inside. But I want the Once diamonds! Done, Flip the lever to activate the powered rail, and push the cart towards it with your body. No! Oh, my diamonds! Guy. My diamonds! The payload is on its way to our vaults. Your current owing balance is now 8,995 diamonds. Oh, uh, wait a minute, we had nine in there. Fuck you! <laughs> I can't be good. Warning. Government agents have entered the facility. This is a code red. All staff are advised that the zero evidence protocol is now in effect. Return to your designated safe house and await termination. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be terminated! But I want my I want my stuff. Hey, you two. In the enslavement pit. Can you hear me? Yes! Yes! It's time to get you out of there. I've broken yes. into part of the slime for computer network. I'll yes. help you escape and you'll owe me one. Got it? Yes. Not 9,000? <laughs> All 
staff are advised to disregard unauthorized transmissions. Interacting with non-employees will incur a penalty on your biannual performance reviews. Oh boy. Ignore them. They're just going to let this place collapse around you. Get to the information kiosk next to the safe house. It's made of iron blocks and it's your ticket out of here. We just made a house. Information kiosk? Information kiosk is right next to your house. Made of iron blocks. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, this slime called brainwashing is really effective. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. Use your pickaxe to break off some of those iron blocks. Make sure you get at least six of them, and then hide in the safe house. The monster suppression field might start to fail at any second. A reminder to all staff, remuneration for damages to Slime Corp property is chargeable to you and your next of kin. Eat it, dude. Get in the safe house, you twerk! Get to the chopper! Hoi! Okay, so you can turn those iron blocks into nine ingots by placing them anywhere on the craft screen. So go ahead and turn them all back into ingots. How many do you need? You'll need 26 each. Alright, I've got plenty. Here. There you go. Gimme, give gimme. Give Alright. Let's um, do it. I'm guessing these slave drivers didn't tell you how to use any eyes. If you go into your crafting table and bring up the interface, at the bottom of your screen is a text box that you can type into. Oh. Okay. So type in iron chest plate and it'll show your result on the right. If you click it, it'll show you what recipe you need to use to craft that item. You can do this for anything you've forgotten how to make. Uh, click the question mark box to put a ghost copy of the recipe into your 3x3 three three grid and you're good um... to go. Both of you should have iron chest plates. Okay. Yep. I, how do you wear it? Okay. Do the same thing for iron helmet, iron leggings, and iron boots. We want to get you in a full set of iron armor. And the leggings look like legs. Who knew? All right, four pieces of armor obtained. Have you both Same. Okay, now make an iron sword and we should be done. Cool. Attention all staff. A special severance package will be made available to all who remain on premises throughout the code red. Those who attempt to flee will forfeit this once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, a very short lifetime. The suppression field <laughs> will probably fail soon, meaning monsters will start to appear and you'll also start getting hungry. All right. I right, got my sword, got, got my sword. Uh, how do okay. we equip all this stuff? So to equip it, press E. Mm -hmm. And then put the armor into the slots next to your character portrait. Oh, yeah. Or you should update with each piece. That was smart. So once you're all kitted out, because the suppression field is going to fail and you're going to start getting hungry, you should grab any crops that are in the uh, farm that have finished growing. All right. And then kill all the animals for food. You'll need it to survive the escape. All right, ready? Crops says precious. The crops, kill the animals. Ah! Once you've killed the animals, get back to that safe house. These explosions are getting worse. Can I open the fucking door? <laughs> Up above the door, there's a right-click plate. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we just kill him with the sword? Yeah. Keep kill them all. That's not disturbing at all. Where did the babies? Sorry, kid. There's meat on the ground and we can't pick it up because the inventory is full. Drop something useless then. Alright. Like a book or like... I don't or a know tree. Yeah, oh, books are useless? Exactly. Books are useless too? The tutorial book Slime Corp makes you read. Oh. Propaganda. Indoctrination! Oh. I roll them up and smoke them. Let's go! Get out! I escape somehow. Get in the box! So I'm gonna need you to cook as much of that as possible in the furnace. Alright, I think I've cooked everything I have. I haven't. Okay, from what I can see, the enslavement pits are about to lose structural integrity, so it's almost time to make a break for it. Let me give you a really quick primer on health and food. Your health will automatically recover over time as long as your hunger level is close to maximum. 
So if your hunger level is more than a couple of points down, you'll stop recovering health. So keep your food maxed out, especially when you've been fighting. You can eat food by selecting it as your active item and holding the right click button until it's being fully eaten. Shit, let's go! Yeah, what do we do? What do we do? Where okay. do we go? I've remotely detonated one of the charges and blown a hole in the wall. You should go through it and into the tunnel that should let you escape. It's in a corner near the safe house. Find it as quick as you can and keep your swords at the ready. It's in a corner near the safe house? She's blown a hole in the wall? Well, there's a big hole in the wall over here. Over here, to the right. To the right? Look, look in back. where? No. Looking where? I'm back here. I'm okay, here. I gotcha. And then over here. All right. right. It's starting to collapse. Watch out for things falling from the ceiling. Okay, have you found the tunnel? Yep. All right, well, the monster suppression field has failed. You're going to encounter monsters in this dark tunnel. Get your swords ready. Remember, left click to attack them. Place torches where it's too dark to see and keep moving forwards. You don't want anything from the pits following you. Are you behind me, Rick? Right here. Where's my headlamp? Mm. Left or right? Right. You guys gone through, there should be a maintenance tunnel. Yep. Okay, so once you're through there, that hopefully was well insulated, there should be a ladder against the back wall, but it's missing. Mm -hmm. If you have some spare blocks like planks or cobblestone, use them to block up the tunnel you just came through. Alright. Okay. Cobblestone. Now we've got some breathing room. You'll need to build some ladders to get out of here. Use the crafting table to make 12 ladders. They can be placed against the wall with right click. When placing them, you can leave the bottom square empty and jump to grab and hold. Alright. Okay, hang on. I made it. It looks like this barrier operates on a redstone circuit. Redstone is a substance that carries a small electrical signal and can to operate machinery automatically. Luckily, it can be manipulated easily. You're going to need to craft a lever using one stick and a piece of cobblestone. Okay. I'll work on that. I have a lever. Okay. Once you've got it, stick it on that circuit panel and flip it with right click. You should send a signal into the circuit that's behind the wall. Mel, is the circuit panel here? I can yep, see. Yep, directly to you in front of you. Yep. Yep. Now I use it. Yep. All right. More ladder needed. <laughs> Maybe one of the left of okay. you. Okay. Have you made it to the top? You should be inside the day one house. Yes. Okay. Stay in there for the moment. Take the chance to sleep on the beds in there so you can respawn should anything untoward happen. Attention all staff. A reminder that personal use of the day one house diorama is strictly prohibited. Sleep, sleep. <laughs> oh lordy. You should be able to leave just by knocking out the walls. Be careful on your way out because there could be monsters in that room. To the right of the glass window there's a door you can open by operating the lever above it. Bust out the walls. Oh god, there's a baddie there. And him. Okay. Guys, that's a mannequin. Oh. I can see why you were employed here. <laughs> Fuck him up! <laughs> yeah! I got mannequin pieces. There's right. a door. Open the door. But there's a lever to the right of the window. I opened the door. Okay. Now, left is going to take you back to the pits, and we don't want that. They've also locked down most of the doors in this sector. Uh, okay, I've got an idea, but it's dangerous. Go to the right and head back to the area where you saw the example of fall damage. Watch out behind you for monsters. You should be able to safely peek over the edge of blocks by holding shift and moving. As long as you hold shift, you can't accidentally walk off the ledge. Break some of the panes in the middle of the window so you'll be able to fit through and peek over the edge. 
you should see a small ledge that you can land on. You want to carefully drop down onto that ledge. All right. There's a ledge. Oh, oh, okay. I fell. Come on, far. Come on down. Oh, I see. As long as you hold shift, it won't let you fall. All right. We're good. Okay, follow this maintenance tunnel for a while. You can only take the ladder up one floor, though. The upper levels are caved in. This seems to come out into some sort of stock storage. Wait, sorry, we can only go up one level. Yeah, the, the upper floors are all caved in. It's a mess out here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, doctor. What do we do? Open the door. Open the door. Okay, Open quickly kill door. those scientists before they alert security. With pleasure. Okay, you should be safe here for the time being. There's a password protected door blocking your exit. I'm gonna try and crack the password. In the meantime, raid the kitchen for supplies and use the beds located in the room through the iron door. Stop breaking the door. Okay, well, if you broke down the door, hopefully that didn't trigger anything dangerous. <laughs> There's no time. Just go through the door. Go through the door. Go through the door. Up the stairs. <laughs> Mr. Jalopy, the morally bankrupt CEO of Slab Corp. It's probably too much to hope he'll go down with the ship. Looks like you're going to have to go through the offices to your right. Smash out the glass and be very careful in there. This part of the facility has already sustained heavy damage from the self-destruct sequence. Keep an eye out for monsters. It looks like the holes in the walls connect to the cave. You'll need to make it across to the other side of the room where there should be some string and a filing cabinet. You're going to need to construct a rope ladder and use it to get out of here. Be careful not to fall into the fire and you can clear long jumps by sprinting and jumping. Simply double tap forward and hold it the second time to sprint. Alternatively, climb up onto the furniture and jump across the room. I'm across. Attention all staff. Unauthorized use of slime cob supplies will result in disciplinary action. Okay, we're gonna need oh, yep. So there should be a filing cabinet there somewhere with some string. Did, Did you get, I get it? it? Did I get Pick it? Pick up the filing cabinet, put it back down. We don't need all that extra weight. I'm putting it over here. Okay. In the office is fine. Ah, spider. <laughs> Sword out and kill that. Killed. Okay. Is this string in yes. the filing cabinet? Pick up yes. the string, please. Okay, 64. Got it. Okay. In that meeting room, use the crafting table to create a rope ladder. In the meeting room. The meeting room is the room with the big meeting oh, table. Yeah. That looks like a meeting room or something. Probably should have used the door to keep yourself safe from monsters while you do this. Well, I'll save him. Uh, yeah. Have, you do that. I'll, I'll, I'll save him. I have a guard. <laughs> okay, rope. Rope. Uh, rope. Looking for a rope ladder. You're going to use it to get down the hole to the floor into human resources safely. I know what you're thinking, but trust me. Human resources <laughs> is far better than what you'll find in those caves. This is the safest exit <laughs> strategy. How many how many ladder segments do you think we need? You only need one. Oh. Alright, let's try that. Okay. Go, go, go. Get down this. Slime court safety reminder. When visiting human resources, all staff should wear hazmat equipment to avoid any unnecessary lawsuits. Right. Okay, try not to think about what's in those tanks. On the wall mm -hmm. opposite the computer there, there should be an opening to an F1 pipe. Somehow less disgusting than the room you're currently in. Let's find Jump out what's in the tank. While I try to reactivate the monster suppression field, it should be a big gray pipe. Oh, it is too. Are we jumping into it? Jump into it. Ah, we got nothing. 
Okay, oh. I think I've got the monster suppression field back online. I can't see anything, anything, anything. Follow that pipe okay. in the exit. You should be underground underneath the facility. There's, okay, there's something blocking the path. I'll have to break it. No, you should be going the hmm. other way. It should be a clear pipe. Oh, okay. Down this way. All right, yep. Uh, uh. Okay, yep. There'll be a ladder. You should be able to take that up to the train station. You might have seen this in the warehouse earlier. I think the train goes past it. Careful not to bump into any of the trains or cars. Here, this ladder. What's this stuff? I want to beat it up. We got ore. Okay, sorry, where do we have to go now? Wait there for a moment. Okay, this is where the favor you have comes in. An informant of mine placed some incriminating files on a disc and stashed it in a cargo train, but they've put it on the wrong train line. Find the train with two chess cards attached and go through mm -hmm. them both. Take everything you find. There should be some cold coke in one of those chests too, and we're gonna need it to get you out of there. Yep. Okay, once you've got everything, first things first, do not flip the lever next to the other train just yet. We're gonna get you out of here on that train. Whoever picked up the coal coat from the chest mm -hmm. cart, right-click mm -hmm. the steam locomotive behind mm -hmm. the train and load the coal into the fuel slot in the middle of the interface. Is this what? Oh. The train that's not containing the chest carts. That's the wrong train line. It's this one, Mel. Rick, is it the right train? Yeah, coal cart over here. Yep. Yeah, put the coal in there. I got a disc. Once mm -hmm. you're inside, don't use your movement keys. Don't right. press shift, which will eject you from the vehicle. You can look around with the mouse though, and still right click to interact with things. I think mm -hmm. we're in. The All person right. in the back nearest the steam locomotive needs to right click it and change its state to running. Right click what? The, oh, the. I'm doing it. All right. It should it's start done. to burn fuel and heat up, and once it goes over 100 degrees, you should see the steam gauge start to fill. Once the steam reaches the 50% mark, the other person will flip the lever to unlock the tracks, and we should be on your way. Tell me when. Okay. Excellent. Hold on tight, though. This facility is really starting to come down. Yeah. Woohoo! I love these rides. Whee! Put your hands up. Yay! See you, love you. Yeah. You gonna die? Oh! I can tell the future. Control. Damn it, uh -oh. why did you have to save them? Stay in the train, I'll try to override it. Oh no, it's Mr. Jalopy. Stay on the train, it's your only chance of escape. I'm trying to get it going again. Come on. Come on. Look at him. Got it. There it goes. coming down, but you might make it. Oh fuck! Uh -huh, uh -huh. We're gonna die! That guy sucked. Are you kidding me? Where, where, He's where? fucking terrifying. Whee! Uh, uh. Oh my god, the outside world! Thank goodness you made it. Who has the disc? He has. Uh, no, Mel has it. I do not. You have the disc. No. Hand over the disc. 